So good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, June 29th, 2021, Tingsboro School Committee meeting. My name is uh, Dr. Flanagan, I'm the Superintendent of Schools. This is our annual reorganization meeting. I will begin the meeting with introductions starting to my far left. Good evening, Robert Mullen. Brian McMahon. Joe Messina, Business Administrator. Julie Guastucci. Becky Stanton. Anthony Tenarello. If you could please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can tell that I don't do this often because I forgot to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded as well. Um, so the first uh, order of action is to seek a nomination for chair of the school committee so I can turn the duties over. So is there a nomination for chair of the school committee? I would like to nominate Rebecca Stan. I will second that. So we have a nomination and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries unanimous. Congratulations, Ms. Stanton. Thanks. The meeting is yours. Can you take your nameplate so we know who you are, please? Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 Who you are. Thank you. Uh, our next order of business is the election of a vice chair. Are there any nominations for a vice chair? Madam Chair, I'll make a nominate Julie Castillo for vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Julie, you can come to the vice chair seat. Right. Names they know who I am. Item 2C, direction of a recording secretary. Are there any nominations for a recording secretary? I nominate Jeff Bow. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? I think that's a no. great choice. <laughs> and um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? <laughs> Madam Chair, we put the information in the drive every year as an annual refresher to this committee. Please ask everyone to review that information uh, accordingly. So I will just piggyback that 2D, 2E, and 2F are all standard uh, information that we provide to you every single year. Uh, we just ask that you acquaint yourself with that. We do need to get uh, a signed form from a uh, new member, Dustine Puma, who can't be here tonight. She can't be here tonight because she's watching her daughter play for the state championship right now. And the Tigers are winning by one. Uh, actually, the Tigers just won. Congratulations to the Division II state champions. 6-5, they beat Dighton Rehoboth. So, uh, so Dustin is being a very proud mom tonight. So, um, but we do need to get a signature back from her. Okay. Is what I was saying. And if you want me to continue down to 2G, I'll just keep going. Yep. Uh, preliminary discussion of school committee subcommittee assignments. Um, in the drive tonight, you have the description of all the subcommittees that the school committee participates in. Um, I would ask that every member uh, look at the descriptions of those subcommittees, see what interests you, and please send me an email by Friday of your top three or four choices. Um, I will uh, collate the information, and I will come back with the draft assignments for our next meeting next Tuesday night. That's great. And I'll reach out to Dustin and uh, Jeff just to make sure that they're in alignment with that. The only caveat I would add to that, Madam Chair, is that we try to keep the negotiation subcommittee the same, given that we are at the tail end of negotiations with both Unit A and Unit D at this time. Okay. Um, item number three is the approval of minutes. So um, can I get a motion to um, approve the uh, school committee meeting minutes from June 1st, 2021, and the negotiation subcommittee meeting minutes of Unit A from June 8, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the June 1st, 2021 school committee meeting minutes and June 8th, 2021 negotiation subcommittee meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Was there any discussion? No. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, that carried, uh, opposed? Oh, that carries 5 zero, zero. You can tell I'm new to this. You're doing fine. Yeah. Um, item number four, correspondence. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. The drive tonight is to see a letter from the Massachusetts Technology Education and Engineering Collaborative. Um, this uh, this letter is a, a letter of recognition for uh, Dr. Rab Gallia and mm -hmm. what she did this, this past year with the Biobuilder Club. Uh, really, it, it talks more about her instructional practices this, this year and you know running labs and, and creating opportunities for kids who are uh, some at home, some at school, just. Uh, the, the difficulty of concurrent learning. So she was recognized by this group as a distinguished educator. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the community and the community to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, number five is citizen time. Uh, this is the time that um, we would normally call um, visitors, comments, and questions. It's uh, really for citizens. So um, we have no one here tonight, so we can keep moving on. Uh, item six is share the success. Um, Grace is currently at the girls' softball game, um, but that they just won. So, uh, yes. So, uh, we look forward to her joining us next time. She'll probably have some success to talk about next Yeah, time. yeah <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, item 7, subcommittee update, negotiation subcommittee. Um, Ryan, did you have an update for that? We'll discuss next week in executive session. All right, great. And then item number 8 is personnel. Did I do that? You're doing that. Okay. Um, my apologies um, in advance, but I don't have any last names here. Um, so staff attaining professional status in um, fiscal 22 would be Gianna Caskey, uh, wellness teacher, Kathleen Marichelle, uh, literacy and technology teacher, Deborah Klemba Anderson, um, an art teacher, Melissa Ruggieri, uh, district-wide speech-language pathologist, Jennifer Spanos, school nurse. Kathleen Wells, district school email out teacher. Appointments would be Erin Bryant, a 1.0 TES school counselor. Jennifer Jen, Jenna Durkin, a 1.0 grade five teacher. Emily Sipa, a 1.0 TES special education teacher. Jason Stewart, a 1.0 TES grade five teacher. Tyler Smith, a 1.0 TES second grade shift custodian. Congratulations to both the staff attained professional status and the uh, newly appointed staff. Mm -hmm. uh, staff renewals with non-professional status. Catherine Cardinal, Melody Chambonet Plansky, Rachel Collins, Timothy Doust, Marlon Fisher, Danielle Lauren, Kayla O'Shea, Alexandria, Jitakis, thank you. Allison Rita, Jamie Silva, Stephen Stanley, Hannah Stones, Stones, um, Jacqueline Tenorella, and Barbara Zimmerman. Uh, notifications of intent to retire will be Sharon Leskowitz. Assistant Business Administrator, uh, 22 years of service. Congratulations, Sharon. And Charlene Trayback, a TMS paraprofessional with 18 years of service. Congratulations on your time. Uh, notifications of resignation. Henry Damari. Henry Damari, thank you. TES paraprofessional. Uh, Jonathan Deschler, a TES paraprofessional. Amber Edmonds, TES teacher. Harry Hertel, a TMS computer teacher, and Allison Kalinowski, a THS special ed teacher. Best of luck. Non notifications of non renewal would be Kristen Erickson. So uh, you can throw the fire on the first week because yeah. at the end of the year, that's all the first stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. A lot of names. All right, unfinished business, uh, summer focus group. Uh, so now we'll jump into the slide deck at this point. Uh, I am thrilled to say that we will not be seeing COVID slides. We will not be seeing community status slides. Uh, we are getting back to teaching and learning and our focus. And I just wanted to make the, the committee aware that, um, as you know, last year was all about COVID. It was all about uh, contact tracing. It was all about mitigation strategies. Um, our focus is teaching and learning. We are getting back to our strategy for district improvement. Prior to COVID, 
our intent was to update the original strategy for district improvement, which was four, four and a half years old at that point. Um, everything was put on ice for the last year and a half, and we're getting back to it. So this summer, we are going to um, we're going to really look at our strategic priorities. Our strategic objectives within that strategy have not changed. Our three big goals in this district are to meet the needs of all students, to provide a rigorous and consistent program, and to enhance our professional practices. Those are our three big rocks. Those won't change, but the priorities that fall under those goals, those objectives, will change. And honestly, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the best of what we learned from COVID and, and what we've known in the direction we're going prior to COVID, combine those and refine and update our priorities. That's the work of the administrative team this summer. Once we work this through, by August, we'll have an update that we'll bring back to the school committee. So for that first day of school, every teacher, every administrator, and every person in the district will have a clear through line of where we're going this year as a district and be able to write goals that reflect where we want to be in terms of teaching and learning and improving the educational system and things for public schools. So that's the overall goal. We will then seek community input in either January, February, at some point uh, after, after uh, the winter break to hear again from the parents. We haven't done that in six years. When, we, when, we, when I first came in as superintendent, we did reach out to the community through a survey to say, what are your hopes and desires? We need to re, uh, refresh the strategy at this point, then we'll reach out to the community, and then we'll update it again next summer to come back with a new improved strategy as we head into the 22-23 year. That's the long-term vision of where we're going, um, but I wanted everyone to go and to know and to hear that it's, it's back to teaching and learning. It's not about COVID for next year. Um, and I think that's critical. So that's our work this summer. Uh, there is a ton of it to do, um, and we are looking forward to it and committed to it. So that's really all we have on our unfinished business. Great. Uh, new business is a school committee meeting scheduled for 2021, 2022 school year. Yes, um, Madam Chair, so I put in the drive, I put in um, the, oh, I'm, I don't know if you can bring that up too. Um, the spreadsheet, not on the deck. Ten A's in there. Isn't it highlighted down further. No, I guess so. Well, that's all right. It's, it's in the drive as a uh, PDF, I believe. If not, we will make sure it's in there. But uh, regardless, the um, the new the new um, or the recommendation of the, the school committee meeting schedule is to go back to the original COVID schedule. So as we look at the school year, the typical school year, um, we know we have one meeting in July, which is next week. We have one meeting in August, which is August 17th. We can talk about potentially adding a second meeting in August. We've, we've not done that in the past, but if Jesse comes out with some recommendation that we need to address or, or, or get out there publicly, we can have another meeting on August 31st. And then we would get back to our first and third Tuesday of the month throughout the entire year. The only month that we would not have two meetings would be April, which typically happens because of vacation. So we split the difference and go the second Tuesday of the month. So uh, I will make sure that's in your drive uh, momentarily. Um, but that is, that is the recommendation to go back to that old uh, meeting schedule that we had. So we, we can actually hold off and take action on that next week. We'll leave it as a draft for everyone to review, and then next Tuesday night we can kind of approve it at that point. Um, apologize for not having it in there. So that's, that's the intent with the uh, meeting schedule. 10B is the executive session minutes from our council review um, and approval. Yes, Madam Chair. So this is, um, this is what we do annually at, uh, at the last meeting of the school year. Uh, we seek uh, the committee uh, action to, to take all of our executive sessions for the year and send them off to our uh, school attorney, uh, Kelly uh, Gonzalez at Long and DePetro. She will spend the next couple of months going through those, redacting them, making sure that they are uh, tight and, and ready to be released publicly. We'll bring those minutes back to the committee probably in September or October when we have a final plan with those. And um, so I'm seeking the committee support to get them to our attorney for action on it. And, uh, does anybody want to support a motion for council to review and approve fiscal 21 executive session minutes for release? I'll make a motion to release the ex executive <coughs> session meeting minutes. And a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Carries 5 zero, zero. Finance, Mr. Messina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tonight, the committee was presented with 13 bill warrants. Um, I do have them all back uh, reviewed and signed. In the drive is the list of warrant numbers and accounts for those. Um, also in your drive for signing of bills, Mr. Mullen was kind enough to stop by the office on June 15th and sign 14 bill warrants as your single signer. Uh, that list of warrant numbers and accounts and amounts are in the drive as well. For signing of payroll, uh, there are actually four payrolls since we last uh, reviewed them. Uh, the payrolls of May 24th, June 7th, the teacher summer pay that was dated June 14th, as well as the payroll of June 21st. All of those warrant numbers and amounts are in your drive as well. For uh, the May financial package, your three usual reports are in the drive. That's the school committee budget at the end of May. Um, the school revolving accounts at the end of May, as well as the student activity accounts at the end of May. And Madam Chair, I'll leave the June 1st enrollment to you. Great. Uh, at TES, we have 760 students. At TMS, we have 395 students. THS, we have 448 students. We have 22 out of district students for a total of 1,625 students. And if I could, just two items under other. Uh, town meeting Saturday morning, uh, the voters unanimously approved the school committee's request for 20-year solar pricing agreements on any uh, school committee controlled building. So it will be my hope over the next couple of weeks to reach out to uh, Power Options, our energy consortium, and Select Energy, who is the vendor that uh, was awarded the solar contract through power options in hopes of reviewing uh, perhaps next steps at the elementary school and Lakeview School for potentially projects next summer. That's great. Um, and last thing under other, uh, we have had a discussion, a number of meetings about uh, our D bus position in terms of transportation readiness um, contract discussion. Uh, D-Bus finally did get back to me yesterday and agreed to our option of an 80% uh, payment for non-transportation days, uh, those being uh, buses that weren't used on remote days as well as buses that were not used as a result of the calendar shift. So um, we're in a good stead with that, that they've agreed to that figure, and that's going to be saving the school committee roughly $26,600 as a result of that, um, that rate change for those uh, transportation readiness days. Um, we'll put through the final FY21 bills reflecting that amount um, and move on to next year. They were not interested in changing next year's rate. Thanks for your work on that, Mr. Messina. You're very welcome. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. The solar panels on the elementary school, that roof project's done? Or do we, would we require? That roof project is being started within the next couple of weeks. Yes. And that roof project is actually the shingled area on the That's dormers. That's the dormer side, not right. The, not right. the flat area not of the, the roof. Flat and that, that roof is in good shape. If we were to do a 20 year contract on those, or would we require? I would imagine we do it on the flat section of this roof. We wouldn't touch the shingles. And, and part of the whole um, process with Select Energy, um, they will send out structural engineers to actually take a look at um, the, the veracity of the roof, I guess, for, for lack of a better word, um, because the last thing they want to do is invest a number of solar panels that a, a roof can't handle. Right. So similar to this project, we did have structural engineers taking a look at it. Um, With a flat surface of the roof is in good shape and we shouldn't have to yes. worry about replacing that anytime we've had soon. zero issues with that section okay. thank you all right school committee discussion mr Mullen. uh first off i'd like to uh congratulate mrs stanton mrs gustocci and uh mr Bo for uh volunteering to uh to lead this group over the next year. We greatly appreciate uh, and look forward to your leadership. I'd like to thank Mr. Ryan uh, for all of his work for the last two years 
as being chair. It's not an easy job, but he handled it well. And I uh, greatly appreciate all of his hard work as well. Thank you. Um, second, I'd like to thank the uh, residents that showed up on Saturday and voted to approve our uh, school budget. Uh, also uh, to approve the transfer of the uh, Medicaid funds through, uh, from free cash into uh, back to uh, the school budget. Uh, it's very helpful for us to uh, be able to count on them uh, making that transfer every year. I'd also like to thank them very much for their support for our capital asset plan for the entire town, but also for uh, the needs of the school. Uh, we, uh, they approved uh, the purchase of a, a new truck uh, for the school district, uh, the, re uh, the repair of the elevators in this building, and also the repaving of the tennis courts at the elementary school, which will greatly benefit not just the schools, but the entire community. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to wish everybody a wonderful summer, and uh, I hope you're all out there enjoying yourselves for the first time in quite a while, and uh, I know I am, and uh, thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate the Teams World Varsity girls softball team on their win in the state championship tonight. Um, I know they had a drive, I believe it was over two hours yesterday out to Western Mass for the semifinals, and it was another hour and a half, close to two hours today. Um, so it's been a long couple of days. I want to thank the Teamsboro Police Department for providing a police escort from Teamsboro High to the highway. I thought that was really cool and a good show of support. Um, there were groups of parents and citizens along the route sharing the girls on, which I thought was really cool. Um, congratulations to Grace, our new student rep, who's celebrating her victory. And Congratulations to Dustine Puma, our new committee member, and her daughter Sammy for also winning the championship tonight. Thank you. I'm all set, thank you. I just echo everything they said. I think they covered all the bases and to, our, uh, to our incoming seniors next year. Have a good summer, be careful, be smart. It goes to all of our students, but um, and we look forward to seeing y'all in September. As much as I hate to hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to thank Ryan for leading us through a difficult year last year. Um, he did a wonderful job, and we're through it, and we're not wearing masks. That's very exciting. <laughs> and I just want to um, thank everyone for, you know, all the support that you've given us throughout the year, and we look forward to a wonderful summer and next year. Thank you. So congratulations to you both, and uh, yeah, definitely thank you, Ryan, for your leadership last year. Very difficult year. I appreciate all you did. Um, certainly congratulations to the girls as well. Um, great win. I'm, you know, we'll hear a little bit about it next week, well, hopefully a lot about it next week. Uh, I just want to remind everyone in the community that on uh, July 6th, the schools come back to life. We have ESY beginning at TES as well as our Jumpstart program. Uh, so buses will be rolling throughout the community next week, so please be careful. Um, and we just hope everyone has a great 4th of July. I want to thank the committee for your trust in electing the chair, uh, and congratulations to the and Jeff for um, your voice. Um, Brian, like, thanks for all of your leadership over the last couple of years, and thanks for like coaching me through the last year and you know helping me navigate that um, as my first year um, as vice chair. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, Rob, Tony, and Dustine, congratulations on um, your election wins. Um, and to the girls softball team, great job, amazing. Um, you know, we're so proud of you. This is, this is tremendous, especially for those seniors to have that uh, win at the end of their senior year. So congratulations. Um, and we do not have a need for executive session tonight. Can I get a motion for adjournment? I'll make a motion. Second? I second it. All those in favor? I'd like Aye. to discuss it. Aye. You'd like to discuss it? <laughs> <laughs> Post. That carries 500. We're adjourned. Thank you.